So welcome to module five, which has the title of functions. Functions maybe makes you think of Microsoft Excel, maybe makes you think of programming functions. What we do in Intelligent Advisor with functions is kind of a halfway house between the two, but they are immeasurably powerful and will make your life a lot easier if you're someone who writes rules. It is inevitable that after a short while of writing rules, you'll reach a roadblock. For example, let's say that one of our criteria is that you must be aged 18 years or over. If you think about how you would go about this if you were interviewing a human being, you maybe wouldn't ask people their age. I know that when you go and you look at a paper form, it very rarely says, how old are you? It will say something like, what's your date of birth? And logically, if we know your date of birth, then we know your age. There's just a difference in approach. And if we know your date of birth, we have to calculate your age. So functions help us make calculations. That's a gross generalization, but they help us do things that otherwise would be long and laborious to do, writing them out line by line. So they're shortcuts to getting things done. The functions are numerous and powerful. There are hundreds of them. Many of them are very complex, so this is going to involve reading some documentation. If you're going to use functions, once again I say the rule assistant, that pop-up window I showed you in the previous demo, which helped me type things in, is going to be your friend. Because the rule assistant knows about the functions. So if you start writing something that looks like a function, it'll probably help you to build the necessary structure to make that function work. You can, at any time, go online onto the Oracle Intelligent Advisor help file and read the function reference. It's available in all the different languages because, yet again, this being natural language, you'd expect to write functions in Spanish, Japanese, German, whatever language you're writing your rules in. And Many example functions use really many example projects use really interesting functions. So I'm going to show you where the example projects are. Functions, as you'd expect, are organized by type, type of attribute. So if you have a date attribute, there's lots of calculations you probably want to do with it. If you have a number attribute, the calculations you want to do with it are probably slightly different. So each group of functions is dedicated to working typically with one type or maybe one or two different types of attribute. Don't assume that functions are going to get you the answer straight away. Faced with a complex business rule, you might have to break it down into stages and say, okay, I need to do this first, calculate this, then do this, then do this. So don't be surprised if working with functions means that your Word document suddenly has more lines in it, but also even that you have more attributes in it. So whenever you work with functions, be ready for the fact that you might want to build extra attributes to make it clear to you, but also the other people working on the project, how you got to your final calculation. A good example would be when we're talking about the age of the pilot, Currently, we don't have an attribute called the age of the pilot. We don't even have an attribute called the date of birth of the pilot. We would need both of those to enable us to build our final calculation. Now, just underneath my annotation, you'll see that it says functions often exist in, in several versions. And this can be surprising, is that some functions are designed to be written as natural as possible, as naturally as possible. So they'll be long and look like natural English or natural German or whatever. Some of them are quite terse and quite short because they either are designed for more technical uses or quite simply, it's hard to express what they do in natural language. Which one you use is entirely up to you. So here's a good example. I have two screenshots on this page. The first one, for example, says the candidate signing bonus equals the less. And just by typing the less, the rule assistant 
has popped up and says, ah, I think you're trying to do a lesser than the, so it's understood that I want to make a calculation and it's popping up with a suggestion. And just so we're clear, the same thing would happen if I was working in another language. The rule assistant is language sensitive. Going back to the idea of natural and we'll call them long and short, here's a really good example. There's a function called the current date. So if you type in a Word document, the current date, Intelligent Advisor knows you mean now, today, the date of the interview. You can also write it in a short form. You could write it as current date with brackets. They are both completely functionally equivalent. They are the same thing. Which one you choose will depend on your audience. Are you writing a technical project that's never going to be seen by subject matter experts or someone from the business? Or are you writing something that you need to share with people who don't know anything about OPA and you just want them to understand what you've written? So, coming back to the idea of our famous pilot candidate, we need to work out how old the candidate is. And we've asked them, or we're going to ask them, what's your date of birth? So this is a great example of a function. We're going to say the age of the candidate equals. So this is probably the first or second time we've seen the use of the equal sign. This is not a yes, no question. This is a question with an answer that's a number because it's an age. So we get to use proper mathematical operators like equals and so on. Year difference. So year difference is actually the name of the function. And as you can probably guess, it means the difference in years between the candidate's date of birth and the current date. So now that we've seen how to build a function, we need to do two more things. First of all, we need to see a demo, which is coming up shortly, but we also need to introduce debugging. This is the first time that we've got a calculation on our hands. We're probably going to want to check that this actually works. So we need to get familiar with the debugger. You'll remember that the debugger was the fifth button. It was the green arrow. So the debugger, which we'll see in just a second, is all about testing the logic of your work. And you might be able to see this is just here. You have a list of attributes and I have the ability to test and view the values of each of these attributes. Basically, it's a unit testing tool. Enough about that. Let's go into a demo. We'll add a function and then we will use the debugger. So we'll see it for real. So I already opened my Word document and you'll notice that I've added a little bit more detail since the last time we spoke. And I'm at the stage now where I want to add the information regarding the candidate's age. Okay, so if I switch to the data tab over here, you'll see that I have already prepared the ground. I've got the candidate's date of birth. So I created the candidate's date of birth simply by creating a new attribute and making sure that I specified it of type date. Because I want to demonstrate how easy this is, I am going to take you onto the internet to show you that in the user guide, in work with rules, I have a function reference in English and I would recommend that at some point you're probably going to want to print this out or you're going to want to download it because this has the complete set of all of the functions for the language you're writing in. So as you'll scroll down you'll notice that they are very much organized by type. So here we have things like date functions and you'll notice that I came across a function called year difference returns the number of years between date time one and date time two. The order of the two dates doesn't affect the result. So you're thinking, okay, well, how do I actually implement that in my Word document? It's really very simple. So I'm going to create a new line, make it blank. Always make sure that you don't leave too many formatted lines around, especially those yellow lines, because the validator will say, why have you given me a blank yellow line? And we'll say something like, Mark it as a conclusion and let's go straight into using our friend the assistant. The age, the age of the candidate. 
You'll notice that nothing is being proposed because this is a new idea. This is something brand new. The only thing we have right now is the date of birth. Equals. And you may remember it began with uh, Y. And you'll notice, okay, it says, yeah, year difference. I'm going to double click on year difference. And now it's ready for me to start talking about the two dates that I want to compare. You may remember that I told you a second ago that you can say things like the current date to mean today, the date of the interview. And for the second one, we can say, well, the candidate's date of birth. You've got to admit, by being able to click, double click, select, you can see I'm typing faster and I'm typing with less mistakes especially when you've got a camera in your face. You always tend to make mistakes. I've noticed that. So there's my rule. Done. Lower chance of making spelling mistakes because I use the rule assistant. What I am also going to do, because I like to be neat and tidy, is I'm going to add a nice blank line here. And I'm going to use something like, let's call this uh, calculate uh, age from date of birth. And because I like this sort of thing, I'm going to do a standard word feature, which is make sure that all my headings look the same. Remember that the heading is just what it sounds. It's just a cosmetic heading. It's really, if I go back to policy modeling, it's really the conclusion button and this color so far that actually really means something to Intelligent Advisor. I'm going to validate and rejoice. And when I return to my data tab, I'll see now that I have the age of the candidate has shown up. It, it, like before, it's read through the text and said, oh, okay, there's a new concept called the age of the candidate. You'll notice two things. One, when I right click on it, like I showed you before, it'll say, well, this is where you talk about it. Also, and quite importantly, it says, I think this is a number. So the auto means it has automatically decided it's a number. You should take the time to double click it and go in and just confirm, yeah, this is a number. Or if it got it wrong, which it sometimes does, you could then adjust it so that the type is correct. And click OK. Now that we have our little rule set up, time has come to test out the debugger. Clicking the debug button the first time you do it can be a little bit of a shock. So we're going to spend just two minutes understanding how this actually works. There are three parts to your debugging tool. My advice to you is, for the time being, focus only on the data tab and the decision tab. The interview tab we'll be discussing later in this class. The data tab is the most useful at the moment. Take a look on the right-hand side of the debugger and you'll see that you have a list of familiar terms. These are your attributes. But for the first time, they've been broken up into two parts. On the top, you have the input attributes. On the bottom, it says inferrable attributes. Inferrable and inference and inferring is one of those pieces of terminology that sometimes people have trouble with is think of them as calculated attributes or derived or determined attributes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the line that says the candidate's date of birth is unknown. And I'm going to type in a completely random date of birth. And down at the bottom, you'll notice it's now saying the age of the candidate is 50. The debugger lets you enter data. So let's change this to 2000, January the 1st, 20. The debugger is a wonderful tool for checking that what you've written in your Word document actually behaves as you'd expect. The second reason for using the debugger is to, once you've got an answer for your inferrable attribute, if this isn't the answer that you're expecting, or you simply want to drill down into what that answer actually came from, you can right click and choose Show Decision. Why? In this case, it should be fairly obvious why. It says, because you told me the date of birth was the 1st of January 2000. Therefore, the age of the candidate is 20. 
and we can go back to our friend the little pop-up window and if we need to revert to the Word document to study it further, I've shown you this before but now we'll actually do it, I can just click on it and it pops up with the Word document says here, right here is where you did this. You can imagine, even with only a few Word documents, how useful these features become. I'll switch back to the Data tab. For the moment, much of the other, most of the other attributes that we have are not really able to come into play yet. I have an attribute, for example, the candidate is unknown. Let's say the candidate is Bobby. I've given the candidate a name. You'll notice, and this is a neat feature, it's replaced the candidate with Bobby everywhere. So now it says, does Bobby have a valid pilot's license? The age of Bobby is 20. It's a neat trick, which we call substitution, which will come in very handy later on if you're building a website and you want the website to be friendly to your consumer. Just before we finish our demonstration, over time, the debugger will grow in usefulness and you will probably work out that sometimes you'll come across something in here that you might want to share with a colleague. You might, for example, say, well, that's weird. I'm not getting the answer I expected from some rule that you've written. Up at the top here, you'll notice I have a feature that says export as XML. When I export as XML, that file can be reused. It can be used to pull back in the data that I'd entered. Let's do a quick simulation. Let's imagine that I reset the debugger, which throws away everything I was doing, and everything's gone back to being unknown. I can now click the Import button, select the file that I exported, boom, and I'm back looking at Bobby with age 20 and the date of birth in the year 2000. With only two pieces of data, you're probably thinking, well, I could have typed that in just as fast. But once you get into a scenario where you have hundreds of pieces of data and dozens of calculations, being able to save this allows you to quickly build up a store of scenarios. So you can share your and say, look, here's a scenario of a person who was born in the year 2000. Here's another scenario of a person who was born in the year 1969. You can imagine that that's going to help all of you work out whether things are behaving the way they should do. The final part of this demo I mentioned earlier that many example projects contain useful ideas for how to use functions. What did I mean when I said example projects? When you install policy modeling, you get a whole bunch of free examples. The example project button, you can filter by industry, so maybe you're working, you're working in the government, and these examples are all government and public sector related. Maybe you work in automotive, hey, there's a couple of examples specifically for the automotive industry. Or maybe you're actually interested in product features. You say, well, yeah, I, I'm interested in uh, ooh, uh, calculations, yeah. And these are good examples. If I now select one of these, I've actually loaded up this example project. You'll notice in the top left-hand corner it says parental leave calculator. And when I look, I go, oh, wow. I just got a whole bunch of new word files and hey, I got a, oh, look at this. So I can debug straight away and start playing with the input data and looking at the inferable data to test this. Of course, you're likely to learn just as much by going first into the Word documents to understand a little bit about what they're doing. So let's just take a quick glance into parental paternity eligibility, sorry. And you'll notice that it's a quite a complex rule, but if we look at here, the employee has notified the employer of the paternity leave application within seven days of the date of having been matched for adoption if this structure should look rather familiar, I think. If you're navigating through these documents and you notice something that is underlined, it's because it's underlining another attribute. So you can jump around and you can jump around by clicking go to and that should look very familiar. So the pop-up window is available whether you're in Word or anywhere else. So if you need to find out more, you can drill down and say, okay, take me to this. And it's opened up another document that said, okay, this is where we talk about it. You say, okay, I'm interested in this, take me to this. And you'll notice that, okay, this is in this document as well. So you can use these features to learn about what these projects do. 
That concludes our demo for this chapter.